Sias Turks. Sias Turks. Sias Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. This is Chacho. I'm here with my co-host, Robert Chan. Hi. What's happening, man? I'm doing okay. We are back with part two with our guest, Jordan Morris. Hey, guys. Good to be here. Welcome back, Good Jordan. to be back on the show. How does it feel to have done an episode of the Science Jerks and be back? I feel like I've warmed up, you know? I feel like I kind of phoned it in for the first one, yeah. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> no, but now I'm warm. I was thinking got the, same the kinks thing. out. We got our it's groove gonna going. It's going to be smooth. going to be very smooth. Yeah, yeah. We've got a comedy groove. We're linked up. We're mind-melded. Hey guys, I am going to do a stand-up comedy show tomorrow, and I thought about going to an open mic tonight, but you guys asked me to be the, uh, to do the podcast. Would you mind if I tried a new joke? You want to try it? Because I would have been trying some new jokes at this open sure. mic. You want to do your type wanna... five right now? Uh, I'll admit, yeah, I'll, I think this is just the one joke. This is do just you, the one joke. Do you want us to be an appreciative audience, or do you want us to be I want a, you to honestly uh, tell I want audience. you to, to honestly tell me what you think of the joke. Oh, yeah. No, well, you, know, you, are, you, you are two other comics, so <laughs> I guess. We could go stand in the back of the room and talk while you tell me <laughs> Would you please? If you yeah, would like yeah. to feel more comfortable. Someone's drunk girlfriend should be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. Um, okay. It's weird that Tom Cruise is always trying to dodge these gay rumors, but he's in a movie called Jack Reacher. Seems like that doesn't help his case a lot. Only it makes more sense when you know the movie was originally titled Johnny Buttfuck. <laughs> <laughs> you get that? Like he changed the name to something yeah, less gay, right. but it was real. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? I like it. I like is Tom Cruise gay? Is that just hack? Is that premise just done? Yes, but Johnny Buttfuck? That's a solid okay. closer. You're, okay. A solid closer. I think the fact that Tom Cruise has been trying to dispel rumors of him being a creature from outer space, and now he's in a movie called Jack Creature. <laughs> okay. Coincidence? I like that. See, I thought it was Jack Reach Around. D- I mean, Creature. that's the that's yeah. the joke. That's the sequel. That it sounds a lot. That's the, it sounds the, super gay. It could be gayer. You know, Werner Herzog <laughs> is the villain in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going opening night, I swear to God. <laughs> I was kind of curious about it, but when I heard that Werner Herzog is playing the villain and, and his first acting role ever... Uh, he has done, to he's done voices on uh, Jack uh, Metal Apocalypse. Oh, does he? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Who does he play? Uh, I think he just plays like random <clears throat> characters. Okay. so That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Werner Herzog has such a strong opinion about what makes art, but... Oh, so whatever your opinion of art was, whatever your opinion of good art was, that is embodied by Jack Reacher and Metalocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have a hard time explaining to you what Werner Herzog's philosophy is, but it's funny that whatever it is led him to be okay with being in both Jack Reacher and Metalocalypse. Well, he, I feel like he used to do, like, really artistic, long, put-together movies. Sure. A Giro, Wrath of God, and then he just he started doing, like documentaries about caves and bears and now he's just doing cartoons <laughs> yeah yeah he's just giving up i don't know that he's given i think he's not, <laughs> just done some good work ah uh, fuck it i'm just going to do cartoons <laughs> i mean it's not like he's on. doing wendy's commercials <laughs> <laughs> oh god if they got him to replace that uh little red-haired girl oh never replace her <laughs> oh, oh. The best. well yeah. hopefully if he she gets kicked off the wendy's movie or the wendy's, the commercial, wendy's, the wendy's movie. Movies. those are oh, movies shit. right that would be the little movie. Werner Herzog's a villain in it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm never going to give eat me your square burgers. Give me your bacon data. Your shakes and are I will too frosty spare and your bake. life. Um, I, the hamburger stolen the plants <laughs> to the triple baconator. I love the Wendy's girl. I think she is the like foxiest girl on TV. I would I would I would hate it if she went away, but I guess maybe if she got replaced she would start doing porn. And that's and that's good. That's good that, for my purposes. You know, is that where you go? Just straight from commercials to porn? I think so. Yeah. Is it? Is that based on uh, the experience of uh, the dude you're getting a Dell guy? <laughs> is he in was, porn? Was, I feel like he must be. Oh boy. What else? Can I would love you to do? see a one with him, the Wendy's girl, mm. Flo from Progressive, mm. and then mm. the oh, animated boy. The General. <laughs> <laughs> Evolutionology. Jan here with Dave Chacho and Jordan Morris. Humans continue to evolve at a rapid pace. Finally. (laughs) Jesus, I feel like we've been in a rut for 10,000 years. (laughs) It certainly seems that way when you you compare it to the X-Men. Yes, nobody has 
laser beams shooting out of their eyes yet. But there have been... Uh, but we've made several movies about them. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. an evolutionary which, step, I guess. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a step forward. <laughs> I mean, originally we started writing comic books about them, and now we're mm-hmm. making movies about and them. And before so. that, we were just uh, drawing on cave walls. Sure. Pictures of dudes shooting laser beams out of their eyes. <laughs> right, exactly. Then, I mean, Shakespeare wrote a couple of plays about dudes. Right, right, right. As, as culture progresses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Iago uh, was uh, originally called Havoc. Oh, I in didn't the know early, that. Uh, yeah, script. The but Mojo was still Mojo, right? Mojo, oh, yeah. In Shakespearean Mojo. times. the caveman. Okay. <laughs> Long shot has been the same since okay. time immemorial. Good. Basically, it's just numbers. You know, 10,000 years ago, there's 5 million humans. Now there are nearly 7 billion. So whatever was going on, one in every hundred. Every single human has a couple of mutations. So that means there's billions of mutations that are just out there and haven't really gotten into the pool yet. Right. What are some examples of a common mutation you might see? Uh, lactose tolerance. Okay. That's not a thing that humans have because huh. you're supposed to drink milk from the titty until you <laughs> b- get that tall. Sure. And I'm, yeah, I'm making a yeah, yeah. For, about the, two for the home and listener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you're done. You stop sucking on your mother's titty. Sure. And you're not um, supposed you seem to... mad about this. I... <laughs> It seems well, to be sticking in your craw. I do not have that mutation. Oh, And I'm no. irritated oh, that, I can every, yeah, yeah. that all these Northern Europeans and he was decided just to take weaned. over the United States. Just last and week, he, was, he stopped. Yeah. He you stopped. want to have a nice yeah. Yeah, my glass of milk. To stop, stop sucking oh, on her titty. I was like, God damn it. I'm a 38-year-old man. I should be able to suck when I want to suck. <laughs> but no, she just... Just, just threw down the. Um... But I'm dry, Chad. <laughs> I'm so dry. Well, now you just made it weird. <laughs> Maybe with the voice. Just... That's exactly no. what your mom sounds like. <laughs> so yeah, there there are things like that that are good mutations, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of bad mutations, and it's kind of like when people say like you know like well there's so much more. Crime. There's so many more serial killers than there used to be. You know, like any anything that you can point to and saying there are more of these than there were fifty, a hundred, sure. thousand years ago. There's so many more people that every little weird mutation happens more often. Not because the weird things are putting into the uh, into the water, although that is also a problem. Sure, but also just that there's so many fucking more people. If this so if one, is, ba- if one there's used to be one person with two thumbs. Now there's a hundred people with two thumbs because there's a hundred times more people. <laughs> uh, well, some some like might some might say bil- everyone billions has two thumbs, of people with two thumbs. But, did, uh, I'm two moving, thumbs on the same hand. I'm only moving one hand because I'm thinking. <laughs> so, I just saw the picture of Honey Boo Boo's sister or brother or whatever. By the way, this guy. <laughs> who's got two thumbs and also has two thumbs. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, I could have done the gesture, but I That just... would have helped. So that would have you... helped me. When you're talking on the phone, you're supposed to smile because people can hear that. Oh, yeah. So if you're going to so make when a you're joke doing that bits with thumbs, two thumbs you thank should... you. Okay. See, now people could hear that. People could hear you make the thumb gesture. So do they think things like being a serial killer, uh, that's a, the result of a mutation? That's that's what they're suggesting? That might be more the result of um, sticks and stones. or uh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> Someone sticks, having their bones yeah, broken. The story with... <laughs> from the last episode where yeah. you're insulted a lot as a child and ignored by your parents. Uh, I mean, that, it's, it's nature versus nurture. I mean, some traits come from your genes. Some traits come from scars that are, you know, that sure. you got grew growing up yeah and also uh yeah social pressures the fact that there are so many more people uh crammed into small places Mm -hmm. you know urban uh environments have an effect on people and some of them to the good and some of them to the bad so yeah so what are the does this does this article suggest what thousand year in the future humans will be like what what will be slightly different i mean i guess we'll be more tolerant to dairy products it doesn't suggest what but it does suggest we might be changing more rapidly than ever before which Hmm. is kind of cool yeah and also when i was in grade school we were taught that humans do not evolve when i learned evolution in third grade they said animals evolve but humans don't evolve and i said i actually said to my teacher that's not true oh that's funny and now is that a religious thing (laughs) is that completely bullshit humans have always been evolving the entire time and we still are and uh, according to this article possibly faster than ever before. So, well, so wait, wait, I, I want to know what that attitude is. Are they like, well, we won't, we'll teach a little bit of evolution in schools. <laughs> what, do I, you think it was motivated by a religious thing? I, I think the attitude is just that natural selection weeds out the weak 
And now we live in cities where, oh, sure. you know, saber tooth tigers. We're not being hunted. Right. We're not being and hunted. But still, there's still natural selection. There's still, you know, if you do dumb things, you will get killed. If you're, <laughs> a, if, if you're less athletic, if you're fat and sit on the couch, you die sooner. If, or you get a reality show. If you're ugly, you're <laughs> less likely to get laid. These are all natural selection things right. it's that just, are you, currently and always happening. Yeah, it's different. And they're probably harder to spot. Sure. Like, you can tell when someone's been eaten by a tiger, but you can't necessarily tell that someone's uh, s- uh, I can tell reading of social rendered, media. Rendered themselves too ugly You're to get laid. You're not fooling me. That guy's been eaten by a tiger. <laughs> I can tell just I don't by care if he's got him. a hat on him. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Someone put that most there Most of his to torso has been eaten. Yeah. And there's a tiger sitting there licking his lips. <laughs> Transportology. Wireless buses are coming. What? That's right. Wireless on buses? There is a, no. a, 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 a Greyhound to Vegas now that has wireless on it, that has Wi Fi. Hey. So, and it's cheap too. That's so you can great. go to Vegas and it's not my story. stick around on the internet. I'm all jewel. for finishing this podcast in Vegas. <laughs> But what we're going to talk about instead is buses. Hey, this is Chacho here with my co-host Chad <laughs> and our guest Jordan Morris. Uh, electric buses that recharge wirelessly as they're driving around the city. Wow, uh, which is pretty cool. Like those yeah. phone, like those pads that they have that you put the phone on and it charges. Yes, exactly the same thing. It's uh, electrical induction. It's you can charge your phone without actually plugging it into anything if you have a little in- inductor. It, it works from uh, electric. Electromagnetic radiation, basically, if you have a current going, um, it creates a magnetic field, and then it creates a current in a another loop of metal that's in the electric field that creates a current in that, so you can store it in a battery. So you're saying our streets are just going to be filled with radiation. This is what I'm hearing. More than they are now, yes. And I'm all for it. If my phone charged while I was walking around town instead of going dead and leaving me stranded with no next bus information, I would be happy. <laughs> well, maybe this is a road to, to increasing uh, levels of mutation, too. Maybe the you know radiation given off by these electric buses will, yeah. will you know speed us up. Give we can get some of these, a little kick in the pants. Get some of these eye lasers a little quicker. And I'm looking forward to being able French to manipulate sperm count while we're at it. Yeah, right? <laughs> Seriously, if you had to choose between laser beams coming out of your eyes or having a child, what are you going to pick? Remember, no, you I can want adopt. Low, I want you can adopt. I want low sperm count to be my power. <laughs> that is also people like me aren't allowed to adopt. <laughs> people who are high, <laughs> yeah. just generally eye laser types. <laughs> they they close the shutters See, when I walk racist. past the adoption. That is agency. racist. I'm sorry. I am racist against. No, I'm not saying that types. you're racist. I'm saying that that policy would be racist. Right. Against if you what? shoot laser beams out of your Non-laser eyes, people? that shouldn't disqualify you from having. Yeah. Uh, from getting married mm-hmm. or adopting children. The yeah, the bill that changes that all uh, will be the Cyclops bill. <laughs> They'll pass the Cyclops mm-hmm. Act. Mm-hmm. That's right. But we're not talking about your damn evolution story no, anymore. No, that's right. We've moved on. Uh, no, we're talking about the X Men. <laughs> this is a uh, research done at Ohio State University. Correction: Utah State University. A grant from the Federal Transportation Authority, which means they're probably um, looking to start installing electric buses around cities. The reason we haven't had many electric buses, there are a few in a few cities. The problem is electric buses have to go back home and recharge a lot, so there's a lot of downtime. There's been a little bit of research done in having cars recharge on the road while they're driving, but it doesn't work very well. Yeah, I remember but, seeing uh, stories about that a little while I back. think the Japanese uh, scientists have come up with something where your car can be recharging from induction in the concrete, but they've only gotten enough current to power a small light bulb so far. Not <laughs> enough to actually charge <laughs> right. your car. But now, this thing in, in Utah, what it does is it, it's a uh, an electric plate that's at the bus stop. So every time the bus pulls up and the bus driver only has to get within like 15 centimeters of a target zone, which is pretty close considering how most bus drivers drive. But once they get within that zone and they just sit there for a few seconds... They get like 50 kilowatts of power transfer. Oh, wow. I don't know how much power you need to power the bus, but they are saying that this is enough if they do it at every bus stop. So basically for every 30 seconds to a minute, they're at a different inductor. 
They're getting 50 kilowatts of power. What transfer. I want to know is how many of these inductors would it take to generate 1.21 gigawatts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how and this? I mean, you don't want to get on a bus, though, and then get off the bus in another time period. Or Why two. wouldn't I? Because you're Go- going somewhere. Why wouldn't I want to get there before I left? Oh, maybe that's... Yeah, maybe the bus will leave. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. No, it's not funny. It's fucking science. It's, yeah, no, it's brilliant. Okay, yeah, the bus can time travel just a little bit. You can get on the bus mm-hmm. and then get off the bus at your stop at the same time. Or maybe if mm-hmm. you're, you know... I feel like a If you're a little travel. late, if you're running a little late, you can slip the bus driver, you know, a 20, and he can go a little... <laughs> further back in time somehow miraculously when i ride buses in la even though it only takes 20 minutes it feels like i've been on the bus for several hours see they've already got it the other way they've right. already figured they've out that right. technology anti-time travel technology so. installed so it can only be a matter of time before time travel maybe it's happens. already happened <laughs> um, yeah, i would love it if they uh if you know it seems like this is something maybe they can apply toward cars sometime in the future like at every mm-hmm. red light or at every parking spot there's a little recharger plate i mean obviously that's a huge huge undertaking but i was listening to something Uh, the other day that says that you know the reason electric cars aren't doing better is just because in cities it's not practical to charge them like i mean i couldn't have an electric car like i park on the street like i don't you know Mm -hmm. know where i would park my car is close to an outlet extension cord and you can't go more than like 30 miles from home and right all these problems yeah yeah so yeah i mean that would be kind of it seems like a cool solution in the future to having more electric cars in cities that's the thing that they're developing Mm -hmm. and um hopefully will be practical in a number of years but they're already putting a fleet at utah state by the way not a lot of cutting edge inventions coming out of utah <laughs> up until now a lot of exciting advancements in mini golf technology in, in mini golf. i went to utah once and there were a ton of mini golf courses <laughs> and a lot of advancement in uh, multiple live technology mm-hmm. wait a minute did the did the science come out of utah or is it just like well there aren't very many people here so it's going to be pretty easy for us to build shit on a road because there's nobody driving on nobody's that. in a hurry so yeah, we can wait, sit the bus stops long what is so important that you have to get anywhere in utah it does say culmination of research at Utah State University. Mm-hmm. So Good apparently, old USU. Okay. not only is there a university in Utah, but there is research at this university. <laughs> Although it does and say it has that, culminated, uh... <laughs> so right. it's probably over. Although there they don't call it electromagnetic radiation; they call it Jesus power. Uh, although nobody, yeah, to be power. fair, calls the it power electro- of Christ. Yeah. Pr- power of Christ uh, propels. To be fair, <laughs> nobody calls it electromagnetic re- radiation. <laughs> Words are not my friend. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, no, I think they should have a bus powered by prayer. Like, in the, mm-hmm. everyone prays hard enough. Yeah, it's going to work anyway. And in, uh, it stops at the stop. Yeah. At the bus stop, it uh, induces more prayer. Sure. And uh, we would be going very fast if we were on a bus powered by condescension. <laughs> <laughs> Just the hosts. Just the hosts here with an update. Chacho here with Chan. Update. And we have new information on fugitive tech magnate John McAfee or McAfee or McFly. Nanny McPhee. Uh, This is the guy you may remember who dug a hole in the sand and covered his (laughs) head with a cardboard box while the the Belize police raided his home. And surprisingly, he got caught. Somehow he got caught. He made it out of Belize and didn't get caught until he crossed the border into Guatemala. Wasn't there a thing? He did an interview with a, a magazine, and they took a picture, but they left the geotagged information in there, so like they could tell that he was at this uh, like a resort or something like next to a pool. No, that's I didn't not see, where well, they caught him. I mean, him. maybe, but I didn't see that. That's yeah. not how they caught him. Okay. So, yeah, don't geocache your, your <laughs> Number one, if don't you're do on that. The <laughs> B, the box thing, not going to work every time. <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah. C, don't you don't want to hide under a cardboard box in the sand in general from the generally police. yeah but it worked for him for a short time so he was he thought that the belize police were going to kill him so i guess maybe he's relieved to be arrested by the guatemalan police or i don't know if that's any better uh, yeah i don't feel like <laughs> anywhere in south america is going to be good for you central But what happened was his neighbor turned up dead just hours after two of Mr. McAfee's dogs turned up dead. So they think that he killed his neighbors for killing his dog. Nobody knows. He went on the lamb for a while, and they caught him in Guatemala. I thought you were saying that 
like the cops regularly kill people and they were going to pin it on him or that's that that's possible... his defense gotcha he says that the belize police hate americans and and murder them and they were trying to murder him sounds like maybe he might have been lying i don't know there's no he's there's wearing no a pretty... side to root for in this He's wearing a very evil-looking goatee. Uh oh! In this picture, perhaps he was killed by his mirror universe counterpart, who is doing terrible Th- things now. M- this might be Bizarro McAfee. Regular McAfee may still be under that box. Maybe there's some sort of interdimensional portal on that box in the beach in Belize. So it's it's like the Futurama episode where there's the universe in the box. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Don't be ridiculous. Infinite universes and infinite boxes. <laughs> if any law enforcement officers want to send us to Belize to Look nope. into the theory nope. of... You're not going? I'm nope. Going. I'll go. I'm <laughs> volunteering I love, to go to the what? sunny beaches of Belize and check if there's an interdimensional portal somewhere on the beach. No, what's going to happen is you're going to get sent to Belize and the cops will say, what have you been saying about us? Uh, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get my South American accent because I'm pretty sure that was East European. Someone has what murdered you- our dogs. <laughs> schnell, schnell. <laughs> what are you doing here? We have ways of making you talk. And one of them is giving you a free trip to a Belize beach. I'll talk, I'll talk. (laughs) Just give me the trip. I'm just pretty sure that every place in South America is full of drug cartels and corrupt cops, all of whom want to murder me because I'm American. Probably. So so, uh, I guess I would have to be on McAfee's side then, because (laughs) I'm assuming all of South America wants to murder him for no good reason. Stay tuned to the upcoming celebrity trial to find out. He's not making it out of Guatemala. He's rotten in a prison somewhere. If he turns beaten to death in a Guatemalan prison cell, we'll probably know he was telling the truth. (laughs) Another thing that is generally uh, said about South American police, actually the Central American, about Central America. American police is that rich people have ways of purchasing their way out of situations like this. So that might happen as well. Oh, fair enough then. <laughs> so if uh, he shows up somewhere else in Central America and there's a new Guatemalan prison named after him, <laughs> then he probably did do what he said he did. It's time for a quiz. It's time for, it's time for a quiz. We're here with Quizmaster Elizabeth Ebeling giving us questions that we then answer. Chan here with Chacho and our guest Jordan Morris. Hey. Elizabeth. Hello. Where are we at in the standings? Uh, Currently, Chan has three, Dave has three, Jordan has two. It's anybody's ball game at this point. Give us the first question, Elizabeth. All right, what are bosons? Are they A, a term in particle physics used to describe matter, B, some atomic particles that carry forces, or C, an electron switch that used in nanocircuits? Sounds like a, a nickname for, like, the sweetest guy at the frat house. It's like, hey, it's Boson. Oh, it's Boson. Boson's doing another keg stand. Who knocked over the liquor table? Boson. <laughs> Boson's going to jail for date rape. What a cool guy. <laughs> oh, Boson. Also a uh, sailing term, mm. the Boson. You're thinking of jib. <laughs> jib probably, yeah. You're thinking of boat. A jib is a subatomic oh, particle. <laughs> What's the answer, Elizabeth? The answer is B, a subatomic yes! particle Boom. that carries forces. Boom. Yay. But- Yay. You spelled out B-E-E. Does that count? You are a douche nozzle. Number two. All right. What are mesons? Are they A, a type of composite particle produced by high energy? B, a contagious disease caught by subatomic particles? C, an antimatter version of the electron? Or D, a type of Japanese soup? Something from film school, right? Mise en scène. <laughs> <Right? laughs> we took a couple of film classes, so. I was at a ramen shop the other day, and I feel like there was something called a mise en. Hmm. So I'm going to guess. I guess uh, what's the answer? The answer is A, a type Yay! of composite particle Yay! produced by high Yay! energy. We are killing this. Boom. They are bound by gluon and composed of a quark and an anti-quark and quarks and anti-quarks famously do not get along (laughs) 
Show enough. Give us another question. All right. Next up, what is super string? Is it A, colored material, which can be sprayed out of cans that provide hours of fun for all ages? Don't be silly. <laughs> I actually think that it is called... Oh, okay. No, never mind. B, a timeline in physics and chemical reactions needed for an effect to take place. C, forces needed to hold atoms together. Or D, a hypothesis which attempts to explain the elementary particles of nature. None of this sounds familiar. I've never heard any of these words that she's saying. I'm just trying to, like, going by the past quiz, quiz questions we've done, I'm just trying to guess when she's lying. I'm going by, like, tone of voice now. Like, what I know about Liz. You're like, Tim Roth and lie to me. You're just, like, listening yes. for the clues. You can throw out all the Japanese soup answers. Yeah. Right away. Okay, okay. She usually lies about soup. <laughs> what do we got? It's going to go on the tombstone. Elizabeth Hebling lies about soup. Lies about what soup. What do you want on your tombstone? Oh, you soup liar. <laughs> Sausage and pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> What's the answer? New York <laughs> City. <laughs> the answer is D, a hypothesis yes. which attempts to explain the elementary particles of nature. We uh, all got that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, obviously, if you were following the pattern, <clears throat> bad, B A D, obviously, that's the answer. Oh, yeah. It did so spell out bad next? so far. Because we all know that Elizabeth is a huge Michael Jackson fan. Right. So the so, next yes. three are going to be A S S. <laughs> no, actually, it's going to be T-H-R-I-L-L-E-R. D-A-N-G-E-R-O-U-S. <laughs> this next one, the final one, right? This uh, final uh, one? No, we got two no, more. This is we four. We got two more, yeah. That's three. Okay, yeah, which of the following is not a hadron? Is it A, electron, B, proton, C, muon, or D, sigma? The answer is D. Oh, no. I'm like, that's got to be the right answer because it's the villain from the Mega Man X games. (laughs) That was my reasoning. Even if I recognize something from Mega Man X. (laughs) Uh, And uh, one last question. Oh, Chan just pulled ahead. All right. This one's a very interesting one. Uh Uh-oh. The predatory dino species... Maja Casaurus type species was named after what rock icon? A. Jimmy Page. B. Mark Knopfler. C. Robert Plant. Or D. Ray Manzarek. <sighs> Zeppelin Dire Straits, Zeppelin Doors. Yeah, I guess I'm going by like, oh, will a paleontologist name this? Like, what's the nerdiest of these right. things to be into? It's Jimmy yeah. Page, isn't it? Yeah. That's the nerdiest of these things to be into. Is um, he the nerdiest? Honestly, Nerdier than Dire Straits? I think you're correct. Um, <clears throat> I'm saying D because I think the doors are probably the nerdiest. Because, I mean, Zeppelin? Yeah, it's all about Zeppelin. hobbits. Yeah, but also, I mean, they're they're the progenitors of heavy metal. I'm like, going which is no, wh- who likes heavy metal nerds uh, come on good point good point i'm going with Nostler. So, <laughs> what's the answer the answer is b oh because they were listening to the dire straits as they found this species okay don't all give right. yourself that point. But I bet the, all the other guys what? in the Dire Straits oh, are bummed. They're like, hey, I'm in the band, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jordan didn't know any of our names to pull it for that remark. <laughs> what is Mejia? Cause, is that a name of a song or something? No, I believe that's just I mean, the... It's like Latin uh, for Mark Knopfler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because Knopfler is actually the actual species, and this is the type of species. Oh. I just want to give you that last You don't want to say Knopfler okay. so no, 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 right. no. <laughs> That would be a little... Get a giveaway. That uh, one was named after Jimmy Page. The, the chillest dinosaur was the Buffetosaurus. <laughs> Super chill. <laughs> <laughs> Totaling up the scores. Jan has seven. Dave has seven. Jordan has five. No, Respectable I lost. Respectable numbers all, though. The hosts retain their undefeated streak. <laughs> <laughs> Only because to not do so would be the shittiest thing in the world. <laughs> hey, a bunch of science guys, and you're, yeah, losing to someone who's not. 
Thank Indeed. you very much, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, where, where can they find you online? They can find me on Twitter at 24 Starfleet and then on Facebook slash Chupa Mother Flippin Cobra dot com. And where can they find you in real life? What's your address? And when are you home? <laughs> your social security social... number. Favorite hangouts. Uh... <laughs> what are your dimensions? <laughs> She's only got four. Only got four. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I guess. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. Time. Cool. Thank you, Elizabeth. We will see you next week. Robotology. So our march towards the singularity and our demise continues. Chan Hero, Dave Chacho, Jordan Morris. Are we closer than ever? We're teaching our robots to lie, to deceive <laughs> us. No. What they've done what is they've possibly looked... go wrong with this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> they've looked at nature. Uh, squirrels, for example, will, um, when they're being chased by a predator or mm-hmm. when someone's following them or something, they'll pretend to go to a place that looks like a hidey hole for their nuts and then scamper off and so people go there the, the predator will go looking sure. for the nuts there not actually there and they will those ain't my so nuts. this is sort of a false hidey hole situation yeah, okay. yeah, yeah and they'll bluff sometimes like pretend they're larger or there sure. are more of them so that the predators will be scared away mm-hmm. and they're using these techniques they're teaching them to robots so that someday wow. we so put- we'll never be able to find a robot's nuts no. so robots are going to steal our nuts and hide them from us where's your hidey hole robot i mean yeah could 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 uh, james cameron's judgment day be far behind <laughs> <laughs> I have the feeling like my real doll is not telling me the entire truth. Right. (laughs) If the Terminators, all we had to do was just give them nuts and they would have gone away. No, yes. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess this, we'll all, we'll doubt our sex doll's sincerity. (laughs) Oh, you're the, you're the, you're the biggest. Where have you been? (laughs) Who have you been talking to? (laughs) You're smiling like you like this, but I suspect. Yeah, you're phoning it in, sex doll. (laughs) Oh, so you and Teddy Ruxpin are just friends? (laughs) (laughs) But they should just, like, install, like, a chip or a safeguard or something to where if the robot's lying, its fingers have to be crossed. Oh, <laughs> so that, that nice. way we can we can tell that it's lying. There, the three laws of the, robotics. That, that should be one of uh, Asimov's three laws. <laughs> right. If a robot is lying, it must cross its fingers. Oh, actually, that's not one of the laws, is it? There's nothing about lying. It's just that you can't harm somebody. Not harming. Mm-hmm. A lot of other person come to harm. Oh. What is it? You can't. You're, ape shall not to... kill ape. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Confusing my sci-fi universe. Four universes. legs good, two legs bad. <laughs> two men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> that's, that's three, three right? Yeah, Don't so, get okay, high okay. off your own supply. <laughs> <laughs> we are not good at We know research. lots of rules. <laughs> yeah, we you know lots of random rules. <laughs> Don't shit where you eat. <laughs> two in the pink, one in the stink. <laughs> you know, Asimov's rules of robotics. <laughs> <laughs> Someday robots are going to try to put more in the pink than the stink. <laughs> The other way around. And I have to They're going to confuse the pink and the stink. <laughs> one and two. <laughs> two and one. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a good idea if you're, you know, for military robots and such, because you don't want to send your $2 million drone out there sure. to go stand off against a tank. You know, you teach it to, you know, back off and, you know, do these strategically valuable behavior. The, the robots to lead the enemy back to a fake base, basically. Yeah, the, to tell the trip. enemy that yeah. there are delicious hey nuts. <laughs> hey, come with me. Hey, North Koreans, you like delicious nuts, right? <laughs> hey, We've got them all. Cashews, almonds. <laughs> you guys want to know where the Pentagon is? It's right over here. <laughs> just follow me. No, seriously, right, right behind this alley. <laughs> and then the drone me. rapes them. <laughs> <laughs> just now, angry sex dolls waiting. In yeah, the just mad. Now, how about your army takes off its pants? <laughs> Close your eyes and you'll be in the Pentagon. <laughs> Kill. <laughs> I don't know how this got creepy. Oh, yeah, it's not creepy. Get back to telling us how squirrels are teaching robots to lie to us. (laughs) I had no idea squirrels were so deceptive. (laughs) What else do they have going for them? They don't have huge claws. Do you think a a wolf is... is 
They, yes, I do. They have squirreliness. Yeah, squirreliness. Yeah, they, they have a natural squirrely. sense of squirreliness. Which is, I mean, I think just inches away from out and out deception. When will science invent the squirrely robot? <laughs> yeah, know. just titters. <laughs> it's light for stuff. This, <laughs> gotta go. Gotta, sorry. No, no, sorry. Can't this sex doll no, just seems like it's always distracted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an ADD. Are you texting while I'm fucking you, sex doll? <laughs> That's our show. And that's our show. Thank you very much to our guest, Jordan Morris. Thanks for having me, guys. Where can they find you? Uh, my podcast, Jordan Jesse Go, is on iTunes and at MaximumFun.org. I have heard of this. Nice. Cool. Thanks for being here. Uh, you can get in touch with the Science Jerks at sciencejerks.com or subscribe to us on iTunes. Please also, do that and review us and do those things that you know podcasts love. Yes, things like clicking on stars and mm -hmm. putting reviews mm -hmm. in there. And giving blowjobs to hosts. Giving hosts. <laughs> if you things. see any of us on the street, mm -hmm. blow us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sexual favors. Any, Just presents, uh, really. I mean, really? chocolate. Yeah. I'll take chocolate. Flowers. But no flowers, please. I, I like flowers. Do you really? There was a commercial once. It was like two ladies, and they're like, "Oh, I want to get my Is brother it the one something." With the diamond commercial where they go, "Screw flowers, we want diamonds." Oh no, that sounds terrible. <laughs> it was horrifying. This it one was stuck in my brain. Like the girl can't figure out what to get her brother, who's like a real man's man, and like every she thinks she gets him is always he always hates it. So why didn't you get him a cake made of flowers? <laughs> a cake made of flowers. A cake that you cannot eat. I've got it's a better idea. How about a cake? <laughs> yes. Or even... How about $40? <laughs> those, yeah, those can't be cheap. Yeah. That commercial short-circuited my brain because there was... <laughs> at no point could I see somebody writing this... And somebody saying, yes, that is the message we want to send to people. If somebody gave me a cake made of flowers, I'd just eat off the icing and throw the rest away. It's just for looks. It's just, <laughs> oh, God. Don't give us that. What, if you see us on the street, I will punch you if you give me a cake mm -hmm. made of flowers. That is not a lie. Follow us at, at the Science Jerks on Twitter. I'm at Dave Chacho. I'm at 999 RPMs. Talk to you next week. Are you, are you on? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm oh, at yeah. Jordan underscore Morris. Hey. Don't forget the underscore. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to listen to the Science Jerks next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>